everything that you have right now becomes the secondary thing, you know, modern comic books, modern comic books that are more accessible to people that people can transact more easily. Maybe that becomes a new thing that everybody wants. Modern original art over from the last like 10, 20 years, maybe that becomes a new Mm -hmm. thing that everybody starts trading because it's more accessible. Even though these these guys they they have the best things, they're they're just holding on to it. They're hoarding it. If they don't let it out into the wild, it's never going to gain traction where it becomes truly collectible. And so are they just doing this card show just to socialize? They're not they don't care about making money at these events? I think so. I think so. Um I think that they do deals between each other, you know, right. because they're because they've known each other for so so many years. I mean, if they're taking checks from each other, they know each other well, okay? Yes, let's hope, so yes. I, I think they do that. When's the last time you brought a check to a show? Never, never. <laughs> and I think that if they, I think they probably sell the little things, right? But all the big things is like, like nobody's going to buy that stuff from them when you can get it cheaper somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like I, I call this- There's like, no comic book repackers showing up at these conventions yet. Not yet, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like the sports card industry, the trading yeah. card industry is way ahead of all the other collectibles. Mm. Comic books and toys, they are way ahead of that. Original artwork, gotcha. they're way ahead of that. So it's just a matter of time before somebody, it might even be me. It might even be you and me, okay? We might we might start our own show. I guess bubble again. Adopt these practices and put it in the, in the uh, comic book industry. And if we did... These guys would be so pissed off because it would destroy their way of life, but it would open it up to a whole new generation of collectors to come in and do something, you know, and have fun and be part of that, that market, that hobby. Definitely know what you mean. It'll so interesting to see, but there wasn't any other young dealers at this convention. It was mostly just oh, older oh men. God. I'm telling you like, and I'm not, I'm not, it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm young. I'm 41 years old, right? I'm a, you're young, a you're a baby still. But these guys were old. These guys were like in their 60s, you know, which is not like a bad thing. I'm not making fun of them because they're old. But I'm just saying like they're they're stuck in their ways. You know what I mean? Right, right. And, and how they do business and how they transact. I mean, like like the show promoter, like the show promoter should be doing that show three days, a three day show. And he should be doing it like twice a year. Well, at least twice a year. Right. In, in a bigger venue, because I mean, it's just like there's so much potential for that type of show. That it's just it just seems really wasteful to me. And I'm not just never about- tried to, to push push it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just they haven't adopted the new style of trade show. Nor and do they is- want to find out about anything yeah, new. They don't want to. They don't want to for whatever no. reason. This is different. This is like different than San Diego Comic Con. San Diego Comic Con is like a like a festival. This is this is a pure trade show. It's like it's like a card show. Right. But with comic. But if a card show was back in the '90s, that's that's what this is, right? I'm just I'm just gonna put it out there right now. I think that the comic book industry is ripe for change. Somebody's gonna be creative enough and do and do a, a show like that at some point. Um, and if I keep getting into comic books more and mm-hmm. more, then who knows? Maybe maybe I'll talk to I'll call up EJ and I'll be like EJ, let's throw a show, let's do one of these things, and then we'll disrupt the whole industry. <laughs> comics anyway, and, anything, anything comics and wrestling about. enough about that anything you want you want to get into before we get to the comments no let's just go in the comments man merlin, merlin has covid right now so he's struggling so we want to well you glad i took it maria made me take a test before it came over although i didn't want to get you and ann and emily sick on her birthday mark the yeah. collector happy wednesday party people thanks mark for viewing tonight zup chili what's up buddy hello <laughs> Denny cards rise and shine. Yes, it is. It's Denny cards time. The sports car professor seven or said good evening, gentlemen. Good evening to you, buddy. Carlos, don't forget to like, please, and the thumbs up. Denny cards. Merlin is six Power Ranger. <laughs> the sports car professor seven. Merlin had a wrestling card collector on his channel with an interview, and he mentioned wrestling card collectors prefer immaculate and their big. Big patches, as I recall. Any recall on this? It was um, not not Zane, but I had him too. But it, it was um, who we just talked about. Drake. You, Drake. Yes. I forgot you had Drake on. I must have missed mm-hmm. that one. Yes, Papa Jim. Uh, time to listen to the podcast that nobody was listening to. LOL. Hope you guys are doing well, Papa Jim. We hope you're doing well, and hope we can see you um, when we come back in March to Dallas. 
Victor Hernandez just getting back into cards after a long layoff. How long was your layoff, dude? Forgot how much I enjoyed listening to you guys. Oh, you must have dropped out in between our show. I'm glad you are back. Continue to watch it. Continue to like and leave some comments below. Renee uh, says, I bet Merlin will be played on Sunday for his anime outfit. There's a podcast called Between Two Slabs. They consume mass media. It seems so sad. It's the great curator and Merlin. 